My first Leatherman was a gift when I was still in high school. A family friend had one, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever with its folding design and endless uses. It was the ultimate handy tool. So when I got my very own Leatherman Super Tool, I was beyond excited. I remember how sharp the knife was, how solid and well-built it felt, and a certain pride in knowing that I'd be the guy who could fix something on the spot. I carried that Leatherman on countless camping trips, through my time as a mechanic, and well into my 30s. The leather sheath began to wear through at the bottom, and I had twisted the flat blade screwdriver, and the once stiff hinges now swung open with the flick of my wrist, but I loved that Leatherman. Like any great tool, I felt like this one had earned its retirement to occasional use as a newer model took over everyday carry duties. Looking at the Leatherman website, not much had changed. The lineup had grown a little bit, but the full-size Super Tool 300 was now the more refined current version of my original. I had considered Victorinox, SOG, and Gerber alternatives, but each one seemed to be missing something. Either they were too heavy, not as well built, or lacking features I had come to rely on, and I'm sure that my fond memories of Leatherman had something to do with it as well. So I got the Super Tool 300 and I was brought right back to my high school days. The sharp knife, the stiff hinges, and the robust feeling were all there, along with some welcome refinements. The plier head was beefier with replaceable wire cutter blades, and the edges of the handle were now rounded for more comfort, and overall it really felt like a stronger version of what I had come to rely on. It wasn't perfect though, and I soon found that I began carrying it less and less. The main issue that I had was while my old one would swing open easily with one hand, the new, less worn version wouldn't. This was a problem more than once when I had to keep one hand on the work and wasn't able to use the tool without letting go of it. Eventually, the 300 Super Tool found a home in my camera case, but no longer on my hip. For the later part of 2019 and into 2020, I simply relied on my Victorinox Cadet. It got most jobs done, but was definitely less capable and less handy than a Leatherman. Then I saw the new Free Series. It looked like the next evolution in the Leatherman lineup with some very innovative features and designs. After a bit of back and forth comparing, I decided on the Free P2. Smaller than the flagship P4, it still packed a solid 19 tools to the P4's 21, leaving out a second knife, a saw, and saving a little bit of weight to boot. The difference between the old style and the new is incredible. Not in overall quality, but in usefulness. The Free Series is worlds apart, like the Wave Series, all the tools are now accessible from the outside. This is a major leap forward in convenience and makes a ton of difference day to day. Getting the knife out of the old Leatherman took a few steps in both hands, but with the free, it's a one-handed, fast operation. The layout of the tools is ideal with the knife and scissors taking priority. These are likely the most used tools and Leatherman has made them the easiest to get to. Not a lot of folks are in need of a can opener multiple times a day. Looking at the tools themselves, it seems as if Leatherman has prioritized the most common tools again, with the thickest being the knife, the pry bar slash package opener, and the Phillips head screwdrivers. These can see a lot of torque and abuse, so it makes sense to beef them up compared to the others. On the opposite handle, the tools have been slimmed down to accommodate more of them. The file, the can opener, the awl, the smaller screwdriver are all less robust, but they don't really need to be. It does appear that all the tools are serviceable, so if you do happen to twist or break one, Leatherman has a pretty great 25-year guarantee. The big one, though, is the fact that the Free Series pliers can be opened with one hand. Rather than friction holding the tool closed, there is now a small magnet which can be overcome with just a little bit of force from your fingertip. This makes it much easier to use in a pinch when you're holding something overhead or in one hand, and in a few seconds you can cut wire, tighten a bolt, or whatever you need to do with the pliers. If nothing else has changed, this is worth the switch from the old style alone. 
Another thing I've come to appreciate is the integrated pocket clip. If you're used to carrying a decent sized folding pocket knife, this won't be much of a change. With a removable deep carry pocket clip, you hardly notice this is in your pocket. I never really liked the tactical dork utility belt starter pack look of a belt sheath. It just gets stuck on the edge of car seats, digs in if you happen to lay on, and just gets in the way. Even though this is a really nice ballistic nylon sheath with a nice military grade snap closure, I just leave it behind. As much as this multi-tool has impressed me, it's not perfect. For example, I wish they would have added provisions to move the pocket clip to the other side for lefties. I also would have loved the option to have the plain edge knife from the P4 rather than the combo knife that they give you. And I wish that they would use a steel like the S30V knife on the Charge TTI or, or even the ability to swap it out if you need better edge retention. I kind of miss the 3D Phillips head screwdriver that you used to get. In practice, the new one works perfectly though, so maybe that's just a hang-up of mine with no basis in reality. I'm also not a fan of the textured, dimpled look. I know it's functional and offers a little bit more grip, but I really like the way that the Super Tool 300 looks like it's carved out of a solid block of stainless steel. But when it comes to form versus function, I'll go with function every single time, and Leatherman could paint it bright pink and I would still love it. In the end, it's $120 well spent, not only for the quality of the tool, but the fact that you'll actually use it. A titanium multi-tool is worth absolutely nothing but the price of the scrap if you don't use the damn thing. The right tool, on the other hand, can be priceless. Just ask anybody who's lost their 10 millimeter socket. So is the Leatherman Free the perfect multi-tool? I would argue that it's not quite there yet, but it is encouraging to see that Leatherman is actually listening to their customers and refining their products based on the feedback that they get. I'm sure that in five years time, they'll come out with an even better version and then I'll review that one too. But for right now, the free P2 lives in my pocket and it's seen daily use. That's all you really want from a multi-tool is that it's convenient and it works when you need it to. And this one does that in spades.